So I've been using the SetPower AJ50 12 volt refrigerator for two weeks off grid and I think I'm ready to give you my thoughts on it. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a couple of things. First off, this is not gonna be a comprehensive review of the fridge itself. That I did in a separate video, which I will link at the end of this video, as well as put the link in the video description if you're interested in hearing more about it. What this will be is a review of two weeks worth of use off-grid while Jean and I are out car camping at Kujabaquak National Park. So I'm going to bring the camera in a little closer. I'll show you the setup. I'll talk about our experiences using it. I'll talk very briefly about the solar power system that we're using to power this device, but I'm going to go into that in a more comprehensive way in a separate video. All right, let's get started. All right, if you are considering purchasing one of the SetPower AJ50 12 volt refrigerators, there's a few things that you should take into consideration based on our experience at least. So to start with, there's a reason why it's in the trunk of our vehicle. Now, we have one of those subcompact SUV crossovers. It's known as the Nissan Qashqai in Canada. I believe it's known as the Nissan Rogue Sport in the United States. And it has a fair amount of room, but still, we had to place it in the very back of our hatchback for this simple reason. First off, let me just unzip the cover on. I'm going to speak to the cover in a minute. I think that's an important option. And here is the reason why. It has to do with the way that the device opens up. As you can see, it goes right up to the roof here. So to, in order to get access to the interior, you need quite a bit of swing space for this. We did try this in the back seat and uh, of the vehicle, and we just could not get swing space for it. Now, we could have left this in outside in the uh, open here, but we've learned from from experience, you don't do that even with a lockable fridge. There you go, it shuts down. Even with a lockable fridge, because the critters here have adapted and learned how to open things like fridges up. Plus, it's able to keep it better charged if I keep it closer to my power source inside of here. And I guess you could say it's a bit of a campground security issue to make sure it's inside of your vehicle, especially overnight. So there's that's the reason we have it in the back of our car. Now, the next thing I'll say is the height of this device also plays into its accessibility down inside and again I'll refer you back to that original video if you want to see more about the internal layout of this but this is, was more Gina's experience I'll say than mine um, because well maybe Gina gets into the fridge to get meals ready more than I do but it's the depth of the device itself so there is one large basket taking up about four-fifths of the inside of the the fridge itself and it's quite deep. Actually, it's very deep. And what happens as a result is you have to remember that some of those things are way at the bottom. And in order to get to them, you have to remove things that are at the top. So it's not quite as convenient as, say, a regular cooler that's more shallow in depth or your home refrigerator, of course. So that's another consideration for this. Now, I also did mention in the original video that although SetPower claims this to be a two-zone refrigerator, it is not not truly a two zone. You don't have two zones that are cooled separate one from the other. You have one main zone, that four-fifth zone I mentioned a minute ago. That is the one that you control the temperature of. There is a smaller side zone over here which is segregated from the main zone and it depends on cold from the larger zone to keep things cool but there's a 10 degree differential between the two. So it's a cooler zone whereas you can actually set the main compartment to freezing if you need to. But it, where you don't have a good split, like a 50-50 split or something, I mean, most people would prefer to have the freezing zone, the smallest area, because you don't keep all your food frozen, of course, and then your cooler zone or your fridge zone, the larger. Well, you can't do that easily in this. So what we did to compensate for the fact that we really don't have a true freezer is we set this at three degrees Celsius. Now, I did the uh, calibration with this at home. Again, I spoke about that in the other video. And we think, we believe, uh, and we, I tested this out with an external thermometer or a fridge thermometer, is that three degrees set, Celsius set on the device is right around one degree Celsius. So just above freezing. Nothing is freezing in here but it's keeping nice and cold, very cold in fact. So my beverages, when I sit down after a hot day, they're nice and chilled, so I do appreciate that. So nothing, uh, unlike if you're using an ice cooler, you're, you're going to have uh, differentials in zone, just waiting for some of the traffic to go by here in the park. 
one of the maintenance vehicles. You'll have in a cooler, if you're using ice, then you're going to have areas that are warmer than others and some are cold. You'll never get down to true freezing. In fact, you won't even get down to the three degrees or one degree, whichever it is that I have here in this one. Now, as far as reliability goes, it's been amazing. It really has. We've had no hiccups with the use of this device over the last two weeks. Now, I know that's not a long period of time, but still, none whatsoever. And I'll talk about the temperatures we've been using this is in, in a minute. So we've set it for three degrees, and it's maintained that temperature for the entire two weeks that we've been here, and we're very pleased with that. Now, the energy consumption for this device. Well, it when it is on, and remember, it's only on, a small portion of the time it doesn't run continuously it's like some of the coolers electric coolers do where they run continuously like a refrigerator at home this will turn on the compressor it'll bring the unit down to whatever temperature you've set it off and then it turns itself off so we have um, it takes very little power it runs at about 43 to 45 watts when it is running meaning even the smallest of power banks will actually power the fridge how long they'll power it for is a different story, and I'll get into that in a minute. So it's very easy, very uh, energy efficient, we'll say. And the other thing about energy efficient is, is that at home, we did this testing as well, and uh, before we left, is we actually unplugged this to see how long it would take before it rose to any significant degree. Well, if you happen to run out of battery power, and that is always a possibility, you can rest assured depending on how hot it is outside, of course, that this will keep all your food items cold for a number of hours before the temperature starts to rise significantly. So that's a good feature as well, just in case your battery dies on you overnight and you don't notice it in time to replace it or plug it into something else. Now, that's been aided by the cover. So this is the insulated cover that uh, Set Power did send with it, and I highly recommend that you purchase this. If you're going to purchase the fridge, then purchase the cover. And I'll talk about the price of the combo price of these in a moment. It makes a big difference in keeping everything cold. When we were using a cooler with ice, we would throw blankets and all kinds of things over the top. And you could do that with this, but you have to bear in mind that down in this corner on both sides is where the compressor engine is, and it has to have ventilation. You have to have clearance down below. So this, uh, the cover is set with a mesh over those two ports and you want to make sure they're not blocked by whatever wherever you put it in the vehicle you need to have that air circulation through the cooler or through the compressor area itself so uh, those are my experiences using it now I'm just going to throw this over the top and I'll quick show you what we're using to power the device today so I brought along two of my Bluetti power stations. This is the AC70. It has a 760 watt hour capacity, so just short of, of 800. And the other one I brought along was my AC60, and it has 800 watts capacity. Now, the question was, why did they bring two such large po power stations? Couldn't I gotten by with a smaller one power station, maybe one of the two of these, or two smaller ones, or a large one and a smaller one? Well, to be honest, we didn't know. We had no experience using the fridge in hot temperatures, so we decided to bring along the two large power banks to make sure we had excess capacity in case we needed it. Honestly, having two of them wasn't much different than carrying one of them. They're, they're heavy, mind you, but they don't take up all that much space when you think about it. So our experiences using this has been that these have done the job perfectly. In fact, if the weather is good, you could get away with one power station. So in our testing, what we found out is that one of the, either of these devices will power this fridge for 48 hours before it runs down to zero. So from 100% to zero, you get 48 hours. That seems like a long time, but take into consideration, it can be really hot. Now, right now in Kushbaquak, it's still morning and we're about 32 degrees Celsius. Our temperatures have run here during the day between 30 and 35 degrees Celsius. And at night, we've gotten down to, I think 20 or 19 degrees Celsius was the lowest the temperature. So take into consideration your temperatures and uh, what, because that will obviously 
need, the fridge will need to draw more energy to stay cool if that's the case. But still we have had excess capacity. Now this is only half of the system. I'm going to show you the other half in a moment just to show you what all we came up with. But I do want to talk about powering this device up using power stations because you really do need to take into consideration the economy. Is this worthwhile? So we did some calculations and uh, the, we, the regular cooler that we had, which was very close to the same size, and we would be in years past using that for two weeks without any obvious, you know, electric refrigeration. And we found that ice for two weeks of car camping would cost us approximately $70. So yeah, it's kind of expensive. Now, that's not the only factor when you're considering ice. I spoke about this, of course, in the other video as well, is that ice is works but just barely, quite honestly. I mean, your ice melts, you get temperature differentials all through your cooler. Some things, a lot of things get wet as the ice melts. So if they're not pro properly sealed up, it, you, you find you end up throwing out a good amount of food if you don't use it up in time before the ice melts. And then it's, there's the hassle of getting ice. So where we are, we are a considerable distance from the closest place that sells ice. So we have to drive to that place and occasionally on a hot, hot day, they're out of ice or they didn't get their delivery. Then we have to drive into town. So that's a half hour longer to get to where the next store is that has ice. And we're praying along the way that they haven't run out of ice. So ice is not a given that you're always going to have it available to you. So you have to take into consideration, yes, it's $70 a year in ice, but you don't get as good a performance as you do with the refrigerator. And there's always that unpredictability of the availability of ice. None of that was a concern for us this year using the set power and the power stations. So that's just one thing to put into consideration. I say that for a reason because, of course, these are not inexpensive devices. I am using Bluetti for this trip and uh, I trust Bluetti as a quality product. I knew that it wouldn't fail me and of course it has them but there's an there's an outlay of money. Now again take into consideration we've been here two weeks no AC power whatsoever. We've depended on the solar panel to ensure that the, these devices are staying charged. Yes you could use your car but it takes quite a while to use your 12 volt uh, output of your car to recharge these batteries. It's great when you're driving, but you're not gonna let it sit in the driveway of your campsite and run long enough to power these things up. All right, so those are a couple of considerations. And uh, again, for the set power, overall, great performance um, and the price. I did mention, say that. So right now I just happened to check on the website and you can buy this package, meaning this cooler or this refrigerator, and this cover for the outside of it for $379 American. Um, that is good price, really, it is a good price. Now, I don't wanna call this an entry uh, level refrigerator. It has a lot of features for it for that money. Maybe not as much as the expensive ones. We looked at, I think a Domatech is one of the ones I just looked at for price comparisons and you can get $1,500 to $1,700 for some of their fridges. I expect that they're high quality and have a lot of features, but um, that's way too rich for me. And I think way too rich for a lot of people. So I'm getting by, or we are getting by just fine with the set power AJ50. It's done a very good job for us. Now, I just, last thing I'll show you before we wrap this video up is the solar panel and second power bank that I'm using. All right, so this is my Blue Weddy 200 watt uh, folding solar panel and it's done a great job for us. Now I'll tell you again these things are not inexpensive but uh, you know it it's proven for us that they are worth the money to have a good quality solar panel. So output in the situation it's right around 11 o'clock in the morning and uh, let's have a look at the battery. So in the back I have the AC uh, AC 60 charging and I'm getting about 120 watts of power going in. So 120 watts means I can charge this up, charge each of those batteries up relatively quickly. So uh, th this has been a great system and uh, the AC 60 is just sitting in behind there. By the way, I have reviews of the solar panel and the two power banks, the AC 60 and the AC 70. If you want to see that, I'll put links to those reviews in my video description as well. It sometimes happens when you're out recording video in the field, you fail to check to make sure they actually hit record on for all the segments that you wanted. 
Here I am at home closing out this video. So all I wanted to add to the video was that for all the information for the set power AJ50 will be in the video description, especially my initial review where I go over all of the technical details and features of the unit. The links to where you can take another look at the set power AJ50 and the other refrigerators that they offer will be in the video description. I would invite you to post any questions or comments you have in the question section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.